Well, a warm welcome along to this week's Mark Langdon's Bets Club. And it is Warren Ashurst and James Milton with you for your one-stop shop for all your football betting advice. I'd like to think of it, James, as a bit more of a tactical double substitution, this rather than a, a panic stations in the last five minutes. But we're here to run you through all of this weekend's action, not only, of course, in the Premier League, but also we'll hear from Dan Childs a little bit later on as well in regards to the EFL Let's just reflect, though, on what we've seen so far in the Premier League this season. One of the main talking points, James, of course, has been about the number of red cards that have uh, been happening so far. And maybe the referees taking a different look on the disciplinary front so far this season. What do you make of it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think we had six red cards, was it, in the first uh, couple of weeks of fixtures in the Premier League. Um, there are only 30 in the whole of last season. Now, obviously, one of those reds has been been uh, chalked off. Alexis McAllister, you know, it looked it looked a, a soft one really for Liverpool against Bournemouth last weekend. I think you you can always tell a lot by the players' reaction, and you know, some 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 uh, professional footballers are, are better actors than others. But there, there seems kind of a genuine shock from McAllister when he was when he was shown the red card there. Um, so I, I, I think um, definitely, you know, new regulations and, and referees love to love to go in hard at the start of the season, don't they? Um, you know, the equivalent of a kind of midfield player putting a reducer in in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> so I, I think it will settle down. Um, you know, that won't come to much consolation, uh, as much consolation for, for players like Tommy Asu of Arsenal and, and Tim Ream of Fulham, who uh, dismissed for, for a couple of yellow cards last week. Which you know, both both of those I think can feel pretty hard done by. But um, yeah, I think it will settle down. But but for the moment, yeah, you 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 want to be treading carefully in those card markets. I think. I think the thing is as well is that the fans quite liked the last couple of seasons. I think when they let things go a little bit more and things were a little bit, you know, free flowing. Should we say more than anything? There is that risk that if they do start to you know dish out the red cards, games get spoiled quite early doors. And as you say there, in terms of you know, having a bet on these games, a red card can make a huge difference. Arsenal seemingly in control in the game against Crystal Palace. They go down to 10 men and they're able to hold on. But that that's something to watch out for. Yeah, absolutely. I think it feels like there have been sort of mixed messages with these these new guidelines. You know, I think I think kind of tougher tackles, the refs are, uh, are being told maybe to let go more than, than they have done. But then, yeah, you get the, the kind of dissent and the time-wasting yellow cards and you know, ironically, they end up probably wasting more time and frustrating fans even even more than the the, the original offences. I think so. We'll we'll see how it pans out. It's not just uh, yellow cards and red cards which have been a big talking point so far. Injuries as well are taking their toll, particularly on some of the bigger teams. We've seen Kevin De Bruyne ruled out for three or four months. We've seen Chelsea impacted quite heavily in the last couple of weeks with injuries as well. I mean, first off, James, is there anything? in your opinion, that we can put down to potentially the firmness of the pitches, where they were playing in pre-season, anything that sticks out to you, why that might be the case? That's, I think it's for, you know, I'm, I'm going to lay my, my cards on the table. I said, do not have any medical uh, training. So <laughs> this is a complete layman's view, but I think it's probably cumulative, really. You know, the, the workload of these players, obviously with the, the mid-season World Cup last, last season, which was a, a new challenge for everyone, um, but yeah, you know, as you say, the clubs the clubs will jet off on these pre-season tours, even post-season tours. Uh, the pitches aren't always uh, as as uh, as good as as uh, you'd like to see in in the Premier League, maybe. Um, and, and and you know, it's, I, I think this this particular glut of injuries has been has been really concerning. And um, you know, you can have virtually an entire fantasy football team of of big name players already already out for, for significant periods of time. So it is a worry. The other thing I'd, I'd note on this is that kind of has a knock-on effect on the in the transfer window. You know, we're looking ahead to the, the third round of, of Premier League fixtures. But, but you know, with these injuries, there's teams still kind of having to having to think on their feet and still now looking for, for, for big signings, right, uh, as, as we approach deadline day. So it'd be really interesting to see how, how that works out, you know, I think probably Palace fans and Wolves fans seeing um, Man City being linked with a with, with a couple of their star names. That's a concern for them because you know if if, if you do get a, a bid that you can't turn down, then you you don't have a lot of time to to reinvest really. Yeah, it's going to be a big couple of weeks or so in terms of how the squads turn out. 
as we then prepare for the main crux of the season, of course. But we're going to focus, as uh, James just mentioned there now, on week three of the Premier League campaign. And up next, it's a preview of the big one. It's Newcastle against Liverpool. So the big match then this weekend in terms of the Premier League is at 4.30pm on Sunday. St James's Park is the venue for Newcastle against Liverpool. You're looking at around 23-20 to 20 for Newcastle to claim the three points. 11-4 to 4 the draw and 2-1 to 1 Liverpool. Um, each, I suppose both teams will be relatively happy with how they've started so far, James. Bearing in mind that uh, Newcastle in particular will probably argue that they've had quite a tough start to the campaign in terms of their opening couple of fixtures. Um, they're looking at potential Champions League football as well and trying to balance their squad. What do you make of the work Eddie Howe's done so far in terms of summer transfer activity? Yeah, I think they've they've continued, you know, ever since the the takeover was was finalized, they've they've kind of been building steadily and that's that's continued this summer. Um, and I'd, I think if, if if I were a Newcastle fan, I think I'd be happier with the way they're they're going about their business than, you know, so if they've, they've just spent the entire budget on Neymar or someone, um, you know, Sandro Tonali, has, he's only 23, I think, but huge kind of European and international experience. Harvey Barnes is a, a proven Premier League performer. And then they've, they've looked to have locked down the, the fullback positions for the next decade or so if, uh, if Liberamento and, and Lewis Hall um, uh, kind of kick on and, and uh, fulfil their potential. Um, both of those, interestingly, came through the the Chelsea youth system. So maybe Newcastle will be selling them back to Chelsea for for two hundred million uh, for the pair uh, in a in a few years' time. But uh, yeah, I, th- I think Newcastle have have got a great chance of of kind of cementing their their position in the in the top four. Uh, even fifth place, of course, this season could get you a um, a Champions League spot with the the expansion of that competition. Um, and you know, just the way that that say Manchester United and have started and and Chelsea are, are definitely going to need time to um to, to 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 hit top gear under Pochettino. So I think Newcastle, the way they they've kind of built steadily, incredibly consistent, only lost five games last season. Uh, two of those defeats were were against Newcastle, of course, uh, against Liverpool. Sorry. Well, just about to mention, which I'm really sort of stunned at when I've just had a look at the stats before, that Newcastle haven't beaten Liverpool since December 2015. That was when Steve McLaren was in charge of the Magpies. They've got a particularly good record at St James's Park as well, the Reds. Of what you've seen of Liverpool so far, would Jurgen Klopp be happy with the start they've made? I mean, I, th- I think the the kind of frustrating transfer window has, has cast a bit of a shadow over Liverpool's uh, on-field displays. You know that clearly that the, the plan was. You know, if they couldn't get Bellingham, then it would be Caicedo, then it would be Lavia. They've missed out on on all of those. So, I think that's affected them. Um, I, you know, they, they drew at Chelsea, made made a, a really bright start to that game, and then faded a bit uh, and, and beat Bournemouth at home again. Kind of fell behind uh, in in the third minute and and looked looked pretty open at the back. And then, and then had to uh, close out the game with ten men, which they did pretty well. So I think a, a solid start, but but um, definitely room for improvement from uh, from Liverpool. And you know, it's going to take time with this with this new look midfield to uh, to to gel properly. So a big test then for Liverpool as to how far they have come with the new midfield in particular. What's your best bet for this clash then this weekend, James? Yeah, I, I like Newcastle. I think they're probably just about short enough in the betting, though. So I'm, I'm going going a little bit left field, over 1.5 first half goals in this one. I uh, mentioned, you know, Liverpool's game against Bournemouth. They, they could have been two nil down inside three minutes there, really. Uh, and they and they themselves made a, a great start uh, at Stamford Bridge. Now, only two of Newcastle's last 20 league games have been goalless at half time. So, uh, I mean, uh, as, as an Arsenal fan, I have fond memories of their, their five goals in the first 20 minutes against Spurs last, last season. Um, so, yeah, I'm expecting a, a lively game and, and definitely a, an, an entertaining first half. So that's James's thoughts then on the big clash of the weekend, Newcastle against Liverpool. Now, looking ahead to the remainder of the other Premier League fixtures, we start off with Friday evening's big clash at Stamford Bridge. It's Chelsea against the Luton side. We've only played once so far, James, due to the work that's being done at Kenilworth Road. Will that break have helped them, or can we see them falling to a second defeat? 
Yeah, I'd, I'm not sure it will have helped Luton, actually. I, I feel, you know, having started the season as as, as uh, hot favourites for relegation, uh, and, and they they lost 4-1 at Brighton, you know, no disgrace there. I, th- I thought the performance was, was OK, actually. But I'd, I feel they, you know, they just wanted to get into their work, really. And so I'm, I'm not sure that the two-week break will have helped them. Um you know, having said that, Chelsea picking up more injuries and more more disruption to to uh, Pochettino's plans. Uh, results, you know, not been great. The first two, obviously, the defeat at West Ham. I think the performances have actually been a, a bit better for Chelsea than I expected at this stage. I thought they'd be be slowly away. You know, I mean, they they missed a penalty at, at West Ham with the score at one all. You know, that could have could have really changed that the dynamic of that of that game. So I think, you know, this is obviously a great opportunity for Chelsea to get that that first win of the new era. Um, and 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 also for Nicholas Jackson, the striker, who's looked, looked really lively in his first couple of games, had uh, four shots against Liverpool, two of them on target. So I'm, I'm going for him to be first goal scorer. You can get around seven to two, I think, to open his account against the Hatters. Well, let's move on then to Saturday's Premier League games now and starting with the early kickoff, Bournemouth against Tottenham. I think it's safe to say that Tottenham are quickly getting the tag of entertainers, James, so far this season under Ange Postacoglu. Bournemouth not shy in coming forward as well. Can we expect goals, do we think? Yeah, you've you've read my mind on this one. (laughs) I mean, last season they played out a couple of crackers, a couple of 3-2 wins. Tottenham came from 2-0 down to win at Bournemouth and... um, uh, and Bournemouth scored two late goals to uh, return the favour in North London. And, and you know, as you've, as you've mentioned, I mean, this season they've got two even more attack-minded managers in charge. So I think it's going to be a really entertaining game. Um, you know, Tottenham started out with a two-all draw at Brentford. Um, Brentford had a fantastic home record last season. So that was a good result for Tottenham. Followed up again against United with a with a victory. The United did create chances there. So Bournemouth will certainly fancy their chances of of getting on the score sheet and and yeah I, I think over three and a half goals obviously copped in Bournemouth's defeat at Anfield last weekend I think that's the bet in this one. There are four games kicking off at three o'clock in the Premier League on Saturday. James's beloved Arsenal are the first up as they play host to Fulham at the Emirates. I suppose it's not necessarily been the dynamic start maybe that a lot of would have expected maybe from Arsenal off the back of last season James but two wins out of two can they make it three on Saturday? Yeah, I'd, I'd be disappointed if they didn't. I mean, they've had a fantastic record against Fulham. I think won, won eight of their last nine league meetings and, and six of those were by at least a two-goal margin. And I think Fulham, as we've seen in the early stages of this season, they, they're, they're going to struggle to match their, that top-half finish from, from last term. I mean, Arsenal, Arsenal to win and both teams to score is, is generally your, your go-to punt in their home games. But actually, I, I think I think the way Fulham have started, I think Arsenal to win to nil. You know, we saw their uh, the way they they uh, dug deep at Palace after the sending off. Uh, thought they you know closed out that game really really impressively. And um, I, I think Fulham, uh, you know, they they had a bit of a smash and grab at a, a, a Goodison Park on the opening day. Scored with one of their two shots on target. Didn't create an awful lot from open play in, uh, in in last weekend's home defeat to Brentford. So I think Arsenal to win to nil uh, looks a, a solid bet. You just mentioned Brentford there and they're at home on Saturday against Crystal Palace in what looks like a game which is pretty hard to call here. I know Brentford looked impressive last week, but you know Palace are capable of, of springing an upset on the road on occasions. How do you see this one going? Yeah, definitely. I mean... You know, if you look at the trends in this game, uh, last season both both matches finished one all. The season before they were both nil nil, and I'm 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 going to stick with that line of thinking. I think the draw is is uh, is a, a really decent price in this one. Actually, um, I'm a I'm a, a big admirer of Brentford. I think they started the season really well. You know, obviously we're without the suspended Ivan Tony, but uh, you know, Bumo and and Vissa have stepped up. I think they've scored ten goals between them in in Brentford's last five games over over the this season and, and last season. Um, and Palace, uh, uh, you know, started out really impressively at, at Sheffield United. Should probably have won by by more than one one goal there. Um, so I think they can cause problems for for Brentford. Um, you know, gave Arsenal a few scares on Monday as well. So I think the uh, the the draw looks a big runner in this one. 
It may only be August the 26th when this fixture is taking place at Goodison Park, but we're already talking about a potential six-pointer it was in between Everton and Wolves. Two teams that struggled last season, James, and, and so far, and the opening two games suggest that it could be the same situation again for both of them. Yeah, I know. I mean, kind of real parallels between the, both these teams, the way they've started. You know, opening uh, opening weekend, they lost 1-0, but, but probably deserved a, a lot better. Everton mm-hmm. created a huge number of chances by, by their standards uh, at home to Fulham. And, and obviously Wolves um, in, in Gary O'Neill's first game showed great kind of attacking endeavour at, at, at Old Trafford and were, and were denied a late penalty as well. Um, and, and then, so, so, you know, there was a bit of optimism going into their, mm. into their, their, uh, their second fixtures, swiftly uh, swatted aside, both conceded four goals. I think, I, I feel like Everton's performance at, at Villa was, was worse than Wolves at home to Brighton. You know, Wolves conceded three in nine minutes and Brighton, as, as they've shown, can, can just tear teams apart. Um, so I'd, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that that, um, that that both teams can kind of um, hark back to that that opening uh, fixtures and 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 uh, put on a bit of a show here. I mean, you know, as you've mentioned, it's early days, but this has got to be targeted as a winnable fixture for both teams. So I think over two and a half goals uh, could could be the uh, the value here. You know, you, you worry about Everton's finishing definitely. I think Wolves have got a bit more about them. And then, as we saw last last week, and um, neither defence is entirely trustworthy. So over two and a half. The fourth and final three o'clock kickoff in the Premier League on Saturday is at Old Trafford as Nottingham Forest are the visitors to take on Manchester United. Is it too early to say there's a little bit of pressure mounting on Eric Ten Hag at the moment, James? I think it's yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's not just the the, the results, is it? Because obviously they nicked that win against Wolves, but the performances have been unimpressive, and 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 you know just lack of fluency and 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 lack of cohesion, and it's obviously not helped by now Mason Mount's injured and uh, Rasmus Hoyland still yet to make his debut. He's the kind of the kind of big goal scoring hope. That in turn means that Marcus Rashford has to play through the middle when I think he he, he obviously prefers playing on the on on the wing. Um, so, yeah, I think there are concerns for United. And, and I think this is going to be an awkward test for them, actually. Forrest, uh, uh, I, I think, are, are, are a bit better than the, the the main relegation candidates this season. You know, finished last season well. Um, uh, that, you know, it was a pretty open game against Sheffield United, but they, they've got a late winner. So... So, so that was that was good for them, and um, and and they and they didn't crumble at Arsenal despite going two 0 down early on. So I, th- I think uh, uh, Nottingham Forest plus two on the handicap. So that's a winning bet if Forest win, if they draw, or if they lose by one goal. At the moment, you just don't really see United hammering uh, teams at Old Trafford. I mean, they were defensively superb at home last season, but you know st- I think they were lowest goal scorers comfortably in the top six. And and Forrest actually with their front three of Gibbs White, Brennan Johnson, and and Awani, uh, who's who's scored six in his last six Premier League games, I think they can cause problems for United. So yeah, uh, a bit of a closer game than bookmakers expect, maybe. Really interesting game at five thirty on Saturday at the Amex Stadium, Brighton against West Ham. I suppose if you look at the the opening two fixtures for both of these two teams, James, it was probably. A train of thought for many that maybe Brighton were punching above their weight last season. I mean, lost key players during the summer that they wouldn't be where they were last time around. West Ham, having lost Declan Rice and not been able to spend a lot of that money that they got for him, you know, there were concerns potentially that both teams would drop off. But what we've seen in the opening couple of weeks would suggest otherwise. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, th- I think with Brighton, you just... You, you just have to kind of ignore the, the the big name players leaving, and and you know you look at the team sheet and you're seeing kind of Danny Welbeck and James Milner and Adam Lallana. You're thinking how how is this team so good? You you just have to kind of sit back and accept this is a a serious football team. Yeah. You know we saw that last season when they were favourites to beat Manchester United on neutral turf in the FA Cup semi final, and they're going off uh, really short prices uh, for 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 matches like this, but. You know, you can't really argue with how highly they're rated. Um, you know, a couple of four-one wins to to uh, to start the season. 
you just feel those, you know, they're, they're, they're getting better and better. No matter who 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 leaves, you know, they still find a way of of replacing them. I like the look of Brighton to win and both teams to score in this game. Obviously, that's cropped in their first two two wins against Luton and uh, and Wolves. And, and West Ham, I think, pose more of an attacking threat than than those two teams. Um, but you know, Brighton are just playing some scintillating football under under Roberto Di Zerbi, and um, they've thumped thumped West Ham four 0 at home last season. But I think the Hammers can can get on the score sheet. But I suspect their defence is going to uh, crumble under the pressure against against Brighton. I read this week that Roberto De Zerbi is pretty much seen as the main man to replace Pep Guardiola when he leaves Manchester City. So high praise indeed. Brighton, by uh, James's thoughts, uh, are going to get another victory on Saturday. There are two more Premier League games to look at over the course of the weekend. Both of them come on Sunday and both of them kick off at two o'clock at Turf Moor. It's uh, a battle of the Claret and Blues as Burnley host Aston Villa. How do you see this one going, James? Yeah, so Burnley, uh, you know, played obviously on the opening night of the season against Manchester City, lost 3-0. I mean, no, no disgrace there. Um, and, and I think they can keep it tight against Villa. You know, Villa's games have been been full of goals. The 5-1 defeat at Newcastle, which I think probably flattered the Magpies a little bit. And then Villa bounced back with a 4-0 win against against Everton and then put five past, past Hibernian in Europa uh, Conference League playoff this week. Um, yeah, you know, I think they were helped by some some pretty generous defending in both of those victories. But you know their attacking unit is looking really slick with Musa Diaby and kind of Leon Bailey revitalised, and obviously Ollie Watkins got a hat trick in uh, in the win over Hibs. Having said that, I think Sunday's game is going to be a little bit quieter in terms of goals. Um, you know, Burnley strolled to the Championship title last season. I think scoring goals for them is going to be a lot harder in the Premier League. But, you know, Vincent Company's had a couple of weeks to, to prepare for this game where Villa were involved in in, uh, in, in European game in midweek. Uh, so Burnley should be fresh. And I, I think a tight contest, so under two and a half goals, I like. And then last but not least at Bramall Lane, Sheffield United against the defending champions, Manchester City. Hard to see anything else other than the away win, James. Is that fair? Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, Sheffield United created very little in their, their opening defeat to Palace at Bramall Lane. A um, bit, bit more uh, excitement at, at Forest. Um, you know, Gustavo Harmus got a, a cracking goal for them. It was mainly sort of long range shots, really. And um, yeah, you know, they're not going to see much of the ball against City. And um, I, I think from the correct score uh, perspective, you, you want to be looking at kind of City wins to nil. Um, they beat, beat Sheffield United 3-0 in last season's FA Cup semi-final. Uh, obviously won 3-0 at, at Burnley again. I'm going to stick with that scoreline um, in, in this game. Manchester City to win 3-0. That's the Premier League covered then. Up next, we'll be speaking to Dan Charles as we discuss all things EFL. If you want some free football bets this season, we've got you covered. Simply head to racingpost.com forward slash free bets. And there you'll find over £200 worth of them for you to use this season. That's racingpost.com forward slash free bets. Well, I'm delighted to say we're joined now by Dan Charles to look ahead to the weekend EFL action. And in a moment, Dan will be able to uh, give you his tips for this weekend's fixtures across the Championship League One and League Two. But as we do now here on Mark Landon's Bets Club, we're going to focus on one team in particular. And it's perhaps, Dan, a team that not many people would have been tipping for success at the start of the season. But they've been quite impressive over the last couple of weeks. And that's Oxford. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's sort of a batch of teams, you know, near the top of League One, all on, all on nine points. Um, and Oxford are one of them. Um, as you said, probably a lot of people wouldn't have fancied them to, to go well. They have been kind of strong performers in League One for uh, up until last season. They were, they were pushing for promotion quite regularly. Last season, there was a big drop off. Carl Robinson lost his job. And Liam Manning came in and, you know, they only just, um, you know, stayed up, finished two points above the relegation zone. But it was a squad that people thought had underperformed. They've added a cup, not not loads of players, but they've added a few players 
this season in key positions. James Beadle, the goal, a highly rated goalkeeper, England under 20 international coming from Brighton. He started really well for them. And they've got a decent striker, Mark Harris from Cardiff. Um, he's not been scoring bundles of goals in the championship, but he's been a championship player for several seasons. And the drop down seems to have suited him well. He's got three goals already uh, for Oxford. And, and I think generally, Liam Manning's getting a, a lot more out of a squad that a lot of people felt were, were underperforming last season. You look at their early results, not just the points they've got, it's the way they've done it. They've gone gone and won 2-1 at Derby. Apparently, they they bossed that game for long periods, then, then followed that up with a 3-1 win at Barnsley, who another team expected to go well. So they've had a tough fixture list. You know, they're still going really, really well. And, and I would... I'm looking at the betting, uh, they are the, the 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 markets are starting to catch up with them a little bit. They're ten to three to go up, and and ten to one for the title. I still think that those prices are, are quite attractive. Even the title one, I think it's a, going to be a much more open league this season. You know, not like last year mm. when Plymouth, Sheffield Wednesday, and Ipswich dominated. I think it's wide open, and and Oxford are one of the teams that could could be a challenger for that top spot. And James Milton thinks that they're capable, certainly, of beating Charlton at the weekend. And that would, uh, of course, continue their excellent start to the season. Uh, we're going to get Dan's thoughts now on his three best bets across the EFL at the weekend. And we'll start off, Dan, because you've got one in each league with your championship suggestion. Yeah, I'm going to go with, uh, I went with Ipswich last week to win at QPR. I'm going to go with Ipswich again to win at home to to Leeds uh, this weekend. I mean, these teams were separated by two divisions uh, last season, but now they're separated by seven points in the championship and Ipswich have, have got the advantage. I've had the, you know, won all of their first three games. Uh, Leeds have had a slow start. I'm, I'm not entirely surprised by that. They've had a real talent drain in, in the summer, lost a lot of good players. That continued this week when Tyler Adams uh, sealed his move to Bournemouth and I think Daniel Farker there is going to have to do a lot of business, you know, in the last sort of week of the transfer window to plug quite a few gaps in that squad. Looks quite an inexperienced squad at the moment. Leeds and Ipswich, it's not a place you want to be going to at the moment if you're out of form. Um, they they won 2-0 uh, at home to Stoke in, in their first home game of the season. That was a real dominant performance against a team. Many think that with Stoke that, that will push this season for, for promotion. Ipswich, I had them down as a a top six team before the start of the season. Sunderland made the jump up last year, went went up and then made the playoffs the year after. I think Ipswich could do the same. I think they'll have a better season than Leeds and, and I think odds against for them to win this weekend around 13 to 10 looks a really good bet. So Dan's first tip then, Ipswich against Leeds. What about League One, Dan? What are you picking there? Going to go with Bristol Rovers at home to Wickham. Um, Joey Barton's Bristol Rovers, another team that I think are going to improve a lot on, on last season. They were sort of lower mid-table last season. I, I think they'll be at least top half, maybe even pushing towards the, the top six. You look at some of their early season results. They went to Portsmouth, got a 1-1 draw. Um, drew 1-1 at home to Barnsley, a team that you know people were expecting to be up there. Last weekend, they lost 2-0. It was a tight game away to Cambridge, but Cambridge are a team that have started well as well. They're on nine points at the moment, so no disgrace in that. I think they're going to be strong at home, and, and, and they're against the Wickham team that I think are maybe going the other way. Uh, after Gareth Ainsworth left last season, they sort of faded a little bit, missed out on the playoffs. This season, they've only got four points from four games, uh, Wickham. I'm not so sure, but you know, I think they'll probably be could well be bottom half this season. Bristol Rovers going the other way. Bristol Rovers at home, odds against, good bet for me. Uh, Joey Barton seems to be uh, impressing at this uh, managerial lark at the moment and Bristol Rovers heading in the right direction. The third of Dan's EFL tips then in League Two. What are we going with here, Dan? Well, this is going to be my, uh, based on my team my, my team in focus from last week, which was Crawley. Uh, they, they're going to Swindon uh, this weekend in League Two. I think um, Crawley have got every chance of, of getting at least a point from this game there. Shade of odds on 10 to 11 to get to, to avoid defeat away to Swindon. They've started really, really well under under Scott Lindsay. He's actually a former Swindon manager. It, it, well, there was a little bit of sort of acrimony when, when he left there. He didn't get on that great with a section of the Swindon fans. He'll be determined to, to get a result, I think, with Crawley this weekend. And he's got a team to do so. Crawley have been had some outstanding results uh, so far this season. They've won 2 0 at home to, to Bradford, had a, a great result, one two one at home to the MK Dons as well. Two teams that are fancy to go well. They did lose 1-0 uh, at home to Gillingham, who are top of League Two at the moment, got a 100% record. But but that 1-0 result, uh, by all accounts, Crawley dominated that game for long periods. So things are looking very good for Crawley. Swindon, I think, are going to be on a bit of a downer because they had a 4-1. They led 4-1 away to Wrexham last weekend and ended up drawing the game 5-5. So I think there might be a little bit of a hangover from that result. But 
ultimately, I think Crawley are as good a side as Swindon, at least. And I think they can go there and get at least a point. Crawley were amongst the favourites, weren't they, Dan, to get relegated this season? I mean, I, I, obviously, that probably inspired them, the start that they've had. And, you know, you would they expect were, them to kick on from here. They've done a lot of recruitment in the summer. A lot of players out of non-league that, that um, you know, maybe, you know, people were, were thinking would struggle to make the step up. But Scott Lindsay knows, that the manager knows the, the, the non-league really well. He's recruited really well. And it's not just the wins that I've been getting, it's the manner of them. They're one of the, the top teams for possessions so far in the league. And that's despite playing a lot of the top teams. So uh, it suggests they're going to, I don't think it's a flash in the pan. I, I think they could actually have a really good season and maybe even push for them playoff spots. So you don't mind, Dan, if you just reiterate the three tips again. And then if there's one in particular that if you're going to have one bet this weekend, you'd go with. OK, I'm, I'm tipping Ipswich to beat Leeds in the Championship. Bristol Rovers to beat Wickham in League One. Crawley to avoid defeat away to Swindon in League Two. My top bet out of those three would be Crawley to avoid defeat at Swindon. Great. Thanks very much, Dan. And uh, we'll catch up with you again next week. You're welcome, Warren. Well, thanks very much to Dan Charles as ever going through his EFL selections. Back to James Milton now as he looks through the potential best bets in terms of bet builders, trebles and naps for this weekend's action. And James, we'll start off with your bet builder. What are we looking at here? Yeah, I'm going for the uh, the Newcastle-Liverpool game. We've mentioned it's a, a, a really exciting uh, game on, on uh, this weekend. Uh, so starting out over two and a half goals is the first leg of my bet builder. Um, Newcastle's last four home wins were by score lines of 5-1, 4-1, 3-1 and 6-1. And um, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, Liverpool have been involved in a couple of really open games against Chelsea and Bournemouth. You know, Mo Salah hit, hit the crossbar, had a goal chalked off for offside against Chelsea. Ben Chilwell had a, had a goal chalked off as well for, for the Blues. Uh, so plenty of chances in both of Liverpool's first two games. So over two and a half goals looks, looks pretty solid. Um, uh, the second leg, I mean, Newcastle love, love uh, uh, to, to get involved in a bit of a battle. Over 2.5 Newcastle cards. Um, they've picked up nine yellow cards in their first two games. So they're um, really embracing the, the new refereeing uh, mm -hmm. guidelines. Uh, all three of their starting midfielders were, were booked against Man City last time out. And, and you know, those guys are, are going to be out to disrupt Liverpool's rhythm again. So... I think at least at least three Newcastle cards, you know, depending on the state of the game, you could uh, you could could uh, get a couple for time wasting as well. We know the uh, Eddie Howe's men are, are quite smart with their game management, uh, shall we call it? So yeah, over two and a half Newcastle cards is the the second leg, and um, for the final leg, so this adds up to a bet build around nine to two, I think. I'm going for Luis Diaz to have over two and a half shots. He's kind of slightly forgotten man for Liverpool, but he's had a great start to the season, scored in both of their games. Fantastic improvised finish against Bournemouth last time out. Um, and when he first arrived, he racked up some incredible uh, shot stats uh, kind of in his early performances for, for Liverpool. And, uh, and he's kicked off this season in similar style, had four shots against Chelsea, three against Bournemouth. Uh, and that was when, when Liverpool had to play the final half hour with 10 men. So I think he will be a, a, a real menace to, to the Newcastle defence. So Diaz, over two and a half shots. And people forget, I think, a little bit, James, that he was out for six months last season. It did have a huge impact on Liverpool in terms of his injury absence. So there's James's bet builder then in terms of the big game of the weekend in the Premier League. If you're looking to go across the games, then maybe consider a treble. What have you got uh, for us this weekend? Yeah, so the treble. So we're, I'm sticking with this Newcastle-Liverpool game. It just screams goals. You know, fans of a certain vintage will, will always have the 4-3 the correct score mm -hmm. in their mind when, when they see these teams lining up. Um, so over two and a half goals in Newcastle-Liverpool is the, is, is the first leg of the treble as well. Uh, Newcastle obviously thumped Villa 5-1 in their first home game. Villa created plenty of chances there as well. And, and Liverpool, really dangerous in attack, slightly suspect in defence. So I think uh, at least three goals are on the cards at, at St James's. Um, and moving into League One for the, the second leg of the treble, Oxford to beat Charlton. Um, Oxford have won their last three uh, uh, league games. And the last two... Really impressive away wins at, at Derby and Barnsley, who are two teams expected to be involved in the promotion battle. And um, their host of Charlton side have lost their last four in all competitions. So I think 
Oxford are kind of a shade of odds on, like a, a solid bet in the in the EFL. And um, um, heading to Serie A on Saturday evening for the, the final leg, uh, under two and a half goals in Milan against Torino. Um, uh, Torino had a, an amazing end to last season on the road, conceded only one goal in their last six away games. Uh, they lost 1-0 at Milan um, uh, last season and and uh, kicked off this campaign with a nil-nil draw at home to Cagliari. So, you know, then they're, they're, they're not going to roll over at San Siro. And um, I think under two and a half goals is a, is another solid selection here. So there's James's treble thoughts then for this weekend. Uh, what about the nap? Are we going back to St James's Park in terms of this selection, James? No, no, I'm I'm going to leave that one alone. I've I've spoken uh, far too much about that. So you'll have to have a saver on on nil nil there in that one. Um, now I'm going going back to Brighton to win and both teams to score at West Ham against West Ham. I think it's around seven to four. And you know we've seen Brighton play some fabulous football in the first uh, couple of weeks. Four one wins against Luton and and Wolves. Um, but you know last weekend West Ham showed showed their uh, their attacking threat as well particularly with James Ward-Prowse now on, on set pieces, which is a, a huge boost to any team. Uh, so I think they can get on the score sheet, but I, I, I suspect they will um, end up being, uh, being, being torn apart by a, a really classy Brighton side. So there's James's bet builder treble and the nap for this weekend's action. I hope you've enjoyed the latest episode of Mark Langdon's Bets Club with myself, Warren Ashurst, and James Milton standing in for Jack Reeve and Mark Langdon. Mark will be back next week and we'll be looking ahead, of course, to all of the action, and not only in the Premier League, but also in the EFL. Remember, of course, to gamble responsibly and more importantly than anything else, enjoy your football this weekend. <laughs>